Wow, buying new construction is not really what it used to be. Now the process isn't impossible. I'm not trying to discourage anybody from pursuing it, but things have really changed in the last year. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some truths about new construction that you can anticipate in 2022. Hi, I'm Jill Thomas and each week I bring new videos about what it's like to move to Florida, living here in the Sunshine State, living in Sarasota, and then of course real estate. So if this has been on your radar, this is the channel for you. Please be sure to tap that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and keep on watching. And then when you do have questions, uh, maybe you have special circumstances, maybe you're thinking about coming down here and checking out the Sarasota area, then please give me a call, text, or email me. I'm here to help. New construction in 2021 has changed so much. Now, I previously had done a video about new construction and how it works, and I'll drop a link to that video below. And a lot of what I say in that video still rings true. But with some of these changes in the last year, there's some new layers that you really need to know about, learn about to help with those expectations when you go to have a home built. And really this whole video, all four steps or all four points in this video can be summed up in one word, wait, W-A-I-T, wait. Okay, so number one, wait, wait on a list. Yes, you do. You're going to have to wait on a list if you would like to pursue new construction. So this is what I recommend to folks. It's really important for you to do a lot of research, a lot of homework. So you go and check out different neighborhoods and usually people will just start off and go, okay, I know this is my general price point and that really narrows down some of the, you know, a lot of the communities you're going to go to. So we start off with that. We start looking at these different communities. You want to look at their amenities, what they offer, um, what are like the association dues, are there CDD fees, things like that. So what's important to you? Do they have the right floor plan? Do you, you know, can you find something that you really like, you really love and you can get excited about? And then you need to know a little bit more too about, okay, what's that total price tag gonna be? And is that still within my budget? Now, once you can get really excited and you're loving like one, to I'd say no more than three communities, but really one or two is ideal, then those are the ones that we want to actively pursue to try to get you a home in there. And so that's really, really important for you to do a lot of homework when you do this. Now, what do I mean by getting the right numbers together so you know what to talk about? Now, in the other video that I made, I went into greater detail. But just real quick, I do want to mention that with new construction, what the usually what the marketed price is for a house, so, you know, see a sign up front saying home starting in the mid 300s or home starting, you know, in the low 500s. Okay, that's just the base price of the least expensive, smallest property that they've got in there. So you've got the base price of the house, you're gonna have a lot fee or um, a lot premium. So the lot's a separate price. Uh, then if the, you're allowed to have structural changes, you're gonna make structural changes like extending a lanai or um, adding more lighting somewhere. Those are all structural changes. And then all the design center stuff, which is the fun things. You get to pick out your colors, your cabinets, your flooring, right? Like super fun, kind of overwhelming sometimes, but that's really the exciting stuff. So that's your total price tag with a property. So you kind of need to have a general idea of what to anticipate to make a really good decision. Then we're going to talk to the sales agent and say, okay, what this is the neighborhood for us. You know, this is what they want. So what do we need to do? And so they're going to share with us what little hoops we have to jump through to be one of the chosen few to get a coveted lot in that neighborhood. And um, every builder is a little different on what they want you to do to get on their list to wait for a lot. Now, because the demand is so high and the supply is a little bit lower, the builders are trickling out lots. Um, they might offer one a week. It could be a total of maybe three, four or five in a month. And so they're doing that so it, they can kind of help control like their supply, um, their supplies coming in, of course, having enough workers 
and doing a quality job as well. So that's why you just can't, you know, they're not selling a dozen lots every month. If they did that, I think they'd all be sold out, you know, already. So they just piece them out a little bit at a time. So you wanna get one of those lots. Now, what does a lender, or not a lender, but what does the builder want from you to be able to get on to this list? Well, a few things. Um, Again, they're all a little different. I'd say at a minimum, they're all gonna say, okay, which floor plan or which model do you want? Cause that could determine which lot the house goes on. So, you know, those two things correlate with each other. Uh, they might want a copy of a driver's license. Sometimes they want a small deposit like $5,000 in the form of a check. And often they don't even cash it. They just hang on to it. Because if you're serious about handing somebody a check, for $5,000, that means that you're probably serious about wanting to build in that neighborhood. So they're just trying to really have a good list of folks, just not a bunch of looky-loos. And that's why it's important to really narrow down just to one or two, because of course you're not gonna start going out and you know, giving five thousand dollar checks to everybody, um, so they know that you're a little bit more serious. If you're getting a loan, they might uh, want you to talk to their lender just to make sure that you are approved. And then something else that some of the builders are doing is just to get more of a solid idea of what your final um, price tag would be on the house. They might have you go through and make some decisions. Now, these are soft decisions. They're not hard. It's not like they are gonna be in a contract and you have to commit to it, but they'll say, okay, in an ideal world, you know, do you want this? Do you want that? And then it helps you to get a nice little kind of reality check, to be honest with you, to make sure that it's still something that you you can and are willing to do. And then if you say, oh yeah, I can do this, or yeah, I can do this, I'm gonna scale back on a couple of things, but yes, you know, we're not too far off. Then they're gonna go, great, then you're a good candidate for building in here. We like the, you know, what which way you're going with all of this. So that's what some of these lenders are doing to have a quality group of potential buyers waiting in the wings for one of these lots. Now, when you get that call, when you get that email from the builder saying, we've got a lot available and you could be one of these buyers for it, then this is not the time for you to really sleep on it, to think about it for a long time. They're basically expecting you to jump pretty quick on this. So if you snooze, you lose. So again, that's why it's so important for you to do all that homework up front, for you to do that research, feel good about it, be excited about it, because then you can quickly move forward on purchasing the property. Now, of course, if you do get cold feet, if you decide this is not what you wanna do, that's okay, nobody's gonna force you to buy it, but if you are serious, then this is your probably your only opportunity to do so in that neighborhood. Now, one thing that can be a little bit of a shocker for some folks is, let's say today, um, in December of 2021, you go and you talk to a builder, builder and you feel really good about it, and you're going through all the little motions, doing everything they want you to do. And then maybe early February, they say, okay, we got a lot for you, We've, we can do this. At that point though, the prices of lots may have gone up and the price, the base price of the home or maybe some of the structural things have gone up and it could bump you a little bit outside of your budget. So be prepared for that too, is that could happen. So that's why again, it's not good. I don't advise you to wait if um, they do offer something up to you today you know, take it and run, to be honest with you, as long as you still wanna move, of course, you know, you wanna build. Now, one other thing that some builders are starting to do a bit more of than even what they've done in the past is building spec homes. So they are just gonna go ahead and decide, we're gonna build this house on this lot, we're gonna make these structural changes to it, and these are the colors, and these are the materials that are gonna be inside the house. And so the, the buyer of those homes really don't have any say in what's gonna happen. It's a take it or leave it thing. They're just gonna give you one total price tag and that's that. And sometimes the homes have already been started. They're close to being finished. Maybe they're gonna be done in six to eight weeks. Maybe some of them they're just now pulling the permits for, but they said, you know, we've already picked all this out. This is the way it's gonna be. So in this last year, I've had, you know, a bit of success with that, with people being able to jump in and get a spec home. Um, I had a guy who just got under contract, I wanna say the early November, end of October, on a spec home up in Parish, and he's gonna close before the end of the year. So that's pretty exciting. 
and um, he and his family are very, very happy with this one. So that was kind of nice too, that we were able to take advantage of that. So there are some properties that um, are run that way as well. But again, they need to know a little bit more about us, know that we're serious, know that you are not going around putting your name on a dozen other lists, you know, in Sarasota, Manatee counties. If um, there's just ways that we can demonstrate and communicate things to the sales agent that really can help your chances of getting one of those lots to build a house on. All right, so now you waited on the list and you're under contract, you got that lot. So number two is we wait for the home to be built. Now you think, well, duh, Jill, I know the house has to be built, of course, but it is taking a lot longer than it has previously. So you get under contract, you get some of these details hammered out, and then what the builder does is puts this package together, sends it to the county for permits to be pulled. And so once they get all the permits on the home, then that's when they can break ground. And that could take six to eight weeks from going under contract to when they actually break ground. So it can be quite a while. So you, you have to wait then. And then once they get going with actually building the house, he might feel pretty good, like they're picking up steam. But then all of a sudden, oh, we're not getting, the framing's not in, so we have to stop with this. Then they get the framing in. Okay, we can move along, we can move along. Oh, wait, we don't have the windows, so the drywall can't go in yet. Or, you know, then maybe they're having a hard time getting kitchen cabinets or countertops. Um, I've heard of garage doors being an issue. I've got somebody right now waiting for their shower enclosure to come in, um, appliances. So there's a lot of things that can hold up the building process. Now the builders really are doing their best. They're ordering things way sooner than what they ever have. Um, they're ordering these materials six, seven months out and they're still not always getting them in on time. And they're also, sometimes things will show up damaged. So then what do you do then? All right, so here's the, some of these dilemmas that the builders are experiencing that's holding up this building process. Now, historically, I would say, depending on the builder, depending on, you know, what the buyer's having done to the home, it maybe would have taken, you know, six months before, seven, eight, maybe nine months for a house to be built. Now, I my, my buyers are experiencing a solid 10 to 12 months for a house to be completed. And I'm hearing of even other builders where it's taking 13, 14, 15 or more months for the house to be built. So you need to have some tenacity. You got to just be flexible with all this waiting, waiting for the house to be built. <laughs> Okay, here's my little ragamuffin Curly. She wants some love. She's kind of a mess right now. She's in desperate need to uh, go to the spa, but she's my little sweetie. So sorry that she looks kind of raggedy for video. But anyway, so point number two, we talked about we have to wait for the house to be built. Now, number three, we have to wait for the house to be finished. And you kind of think, well, that seems sort of like a duh thing, right? Like that's just the next natural step, but what happens is you're going to start off seeing you know your house from a mound of dirt to a shell of a property and then it really starts to flesh out it takes shape it becomes that beautiful home that you've imagined that you've designed you've picked out all these things you're looking at furniture you're doing all this fun stuff but then you feel like you're just sort of stuck you're waiting and waiting well what's happening now is at the very last minute certain things still aren't coming in which could really cause a delay in closing it's one thing you know if you can't hardly envision the house yet or if it's still a shell and something's not in it's another thing when you're like oh it's so close i can taste it and then it's not done so what is happening is depending on what item is lacking if it's like a garage door then usually hey sweetie if it's like a garage door then people are usually waiting to close um, I, honestly, I don't even think they could close because I think they need their certificate of occupancy, their CO for some of that stuff. But then um, um, let's say I've had somebody who closed who was missing a couple kitchen cabinet doors and one actually upper cabinet because they came in damaged. So then the buyer said, nope, that's fine. I'll close. When those items come in, then you can finish the job. And of course, this is all in writing. Now I've got somebody else who is like, nope, I want everything to be done before we close. And so the builder's trying to work with them to sort of accommodate some things. 
and actually in the end they're getting some upgraded appliances and stuff so they're doing pretty, pretty well with some of this stuff um because the builder just can't get the appliances that they bought oh she's done all right tell everybody bye all right, go down. <laughs> All right, so that's the thing. We're waiting for this house to be finished and you might need to wait a little bit longer or actually accept the house with some slightly unfinished things. And depending on how your contract is written can determine how stubborn you wanna be. And when I say stubborn, I say that in the nicest way because you're buying a brand new house and I get it, you want it to be done, right? I totally get that. So that's where they're at right now is we have to wait and be patient for the house to be finished. Okay, number four, I have some people who they themselves have decided to wait. And I said, that's fine if you wanna wait, but I don't recommend that you wait too long. If you're serious about um, having a home built. Now this last year, because everything just sort of all of a sudden turned upside down, this whole process, how everything worked, I had a number of people say, I just can't handle this. This is too much for me. I'm gonna wait to see what happens next year. I wanna wait to see if prices go down. I wanna wait to see if maybe this system or this method of having a home built um, is streamlined a little bit better. And so they've got all these reasons for waiting, which is totally fine. Like I, I get that for sure. Um, but if you're still serious about doing this, I recommend that um, you jump on board sooner than later. And just because of my past experience with doing new construction and then dealing with a lot of buyers this year, I've really learned a lot more on um, how to handle some of these things, you know, as everybody was learning as we're going along, because um, this was all new to everybody, the builders, the sales agents, and like myself as a realtor. So, um, just don't wait too long if that's what you wanna do, if you wanna pull the trigger. And let me tell you a good story that happened this summer. I had this couple down, or not down, but over from California, really sweet couple, and they wanted to have a really nice house built. So we spent a ton of time together, checking out different communities, neighborhoods, and uh, finally they found a house they loved, the floor plan, the builder, the neighborhood, everything. They just said, this is where we wanna be. So again, just went through those steps. Like I mentioned, we talked to the sales agent. Okay, what do we need to do to get on a list? Uh, what processes do you want us to go through? So we, they quickly did a bunch of things while they were here in town. They were on top of all of it. It was really good. So um, all along the sales agent kept saying, no, we're not gonna get any lots till next month. That's what they're telling us. That's what they're telling us. And all of a sudden pff, they go, listen, there's a lot that became available and you've got like two days to put an offer in on it. So because they went through all those processes, so the builder knew that they were a strong, qualified buyer. The only thing they had to do then was log in and say, this is how much we're gonna offer for this lot as is other buyers were doing. So they said to me, Jill, what number do we offer on this lot? Now the builder gave us a base price and said at a minimum, it's gonna go for this. So if you want to offer more, you can offer more. If you don't want to, you can just offer the base price, right? Well, they do, they had to be competitive. They had to come up in price. And they just, what do we do, Jill? What do we do? So finally, after we were talking, I just said, do you guys love this home? And they said, yes, absolutely. This, this is our house. And I said, okay, do you love this neighborhood? Yep, absolutely. We love everything about it. I said, okay, great. And you love the builder? Yep. We, they were just so excited. So I told them, I said, well, then you need to come in as strong as you feel comfortable doing so. Because we know that in the future, in the next month, the next round of bidding on lots, the prices are only gonna be higher. They're gonna most likely increase the prices of the homes. So you're gonna be spending more money anyhow if you wait. So you might as well put that money towards the lot today, get that sealed, get, you know, get yourself locked in, and then you're starting the building process sooner. And they go, okay, that makes sense. So to help put in perspective, the base price of the lot was $80,000. They offered, I don't know if it was 127 or 129, 129,000, something like that. So they did, they came in almost $50,000 over the price, the original price of the lot and they got it. So they were really excited. And then before we knew it, sure enough, the base price of those lots were well over $100,000 already. 
and the price of the homes had gone up. So had they waited at all, they would have spent a lot more money just to get their foot in the door. So that was a really good success story. Now I've got other success stories where the lot prices aren't quite so high. They're, you know, below $50,000. But I just thought that was a really good one because it just shows that if you're serious, um, waiting will most likely only, you know, cost you more money. So you want to be careful with that. Okay, so to wrap this up, I just do want to remind you that even before some of these topsy-turvy times we're going through with supply issues and things like that, that um, the building process still was never really perfect, but I at least for myself, I felt pretty good about um, the process and really to how to help a buyer because um, I knew how to, where to push a builder, where to say, okay, you know what, they are going above and beyond here. They're doing an awesome job. And they really knew how to work through the process. So this last year learned a lot. Um, again, had to learn some new layers of how to maneuver all of this, but I've had a lot of great success um, with buyers, building new homes and it's been so much fun. New construction is really exciting and it's still very possible in 2022. So I don't want to discourage anybody at all from wanting to pursue it, but it just, it's good for you to know these things to help with those expectations. So you're not thrown off. Um, so you understand that, you know, some of the things that you may or may not encounter with a builder. And I think that's just going to help you out in the long run. So I'm here to help you. And if things change again, then I'm going to quickly adjust figure it out, help learn so I can help buyers out there find the perfect home um, to have built with the perfect builder. So just remember WAIT, you just might have to wait a little bit. <laughs> and that's the truth of new construction. Well, thanks so much for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or even comments, maybe something you've experienced or a friend or loved one has experienced with new construction in the last year or two, then drop it in the comments section below. We'd like to hear from all of you. All right, guys, thanks so much. Have a great day. Thank you.